nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Joy to the world when the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven. So that's a familiar one. There's another familiar one that's going to talk about angels and singing. Angels. And good luck with this one, okay? <laughs> Angel. No, oh, that's wrong. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply. Have a seat, and you guys go ahead and have a seat too. Okay. Our kids come in. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, hello again. Good morning. Nice to see you here in this beautiful community called Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas, where we believe that God. I call it God, you can call it whatever you want. God doesn't care what you call it. It's that one infinite intelligence that brought forth the universe from its own self at the very beginning of creation. That is all that there is still. God is all there is. That is the shorthand version of what we believe in a nutshell. And we are so grateful that you came in here this morning to experience this day with us. And so you're welcome here wherever you are on your journey of faith. And if you are here for the very first time, we consider you a, a blessed being and an honored guest. We are grateful that you came in here today. Part of the packet that everyone was handed when they came in includes a connection card. We would love it if you would fill that out. Our first time and second time attendees especially, check that box on the card. We would like to discover and explore ways of staying connected with you in ways that work for you with your life and the way that it is now. So let us know who you are, how you came to find us, and anything else you choose to share on that connection card. We would love to meet you after the service. We have a welcome center in the lobby where you can go meet a wonderful, friendly group of people. They will know your name, 
you can know their name. They can show you around the center so you can find out where the things are, where our prayer room is, our bookstore, the great room for fellowship, all of the wonderful opportunities that you have to stay in community with us here this morning. If you came back a second time, we are grateful that you came back. I trust that whatever ignited in you from your first visit continues to inspire you to join us. We love it when you come on a regular basis. So those of you who are here regularly, thank you so much for that. If you're joining us online on our YouTube channel, welcome on this beautiful day or any time later via our archive. We're glad that you're tuning in and listening to these messages online. It's great to have you join us. So before we move into our service time, I want to point up this beautiful arrangement of flowers back here standing on this amazing stand. I hope you can see them. Larry Thompson did a wonderful job of creating a unique arrangement again. Diane Joslin, oh, look at that picture. Oh, my goodness. Our flowers today are from Diane Joslin, right here in the middle there. Thank you, Diane. In loving memory of her late husband, Steve, whose birthday was on Friday, December 1st, 1946, to August 24th, 2011. And every time Diane talks about him and their time together, she beams. And I'm just so grateful that you brought uh, him into our midst again this morning. And the flowers are gorgeous. So thank you, Larry, for that. Um, I want to give a shout out. Thank you to all of you who came yesterday to help in our cleanup day. How many of you, who, who, who here was here? See, the rest of them are sleeping in because it was a lot of good work was being done yesterday. Uh, Sabrina said we had 50 volunteer hours uh, given yesterday, so congratulations to us, yay. It helped the center a whole lot. If we put money to that, the way the government uh, monetizes volunteer hours, that would have been $1,250. We would have had to pay someone to do what we did yesterday. So thank you all who came to do that. That is wonderful. Let's give our volunteers a hand. We thank you for that. All right, and uh, we're going to celebrate birthdays, but it's the first Sunday of the month, so we also have our youth with us this morning, and they're waiting in the back. I want them to come forward. We're going to talk to them a little bit, then we'll sing a birthday song, and we'll join in singing a Christmas carol together. Let's welcome our kids with some applause. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, come on. Come on up. Come on, Miss Claire. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, Hello. Hi, you. How are you guys doing today? Oh, I'm not covering, covering somebody up. So, um, Reverend Claire said, you know, we're, what we're going to explore this month, the theme that we do this month, is a word called integrity. <laughs> integrity. Wyatt, what? what does integrity mean to you? Um, to do something good when nobody's watching. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> you didn't hear what his sister said. You took mine. <laughs> do you have another one? Um, to tell the truth. To tell the truth. That's a good one. I love you and your little baby. What do you have to say? Uh, sharing. Sharing. That's awful sweet. That's a good one. How about you? Thinking hard. Something good. What is it? Be the best I can. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Hi, Sarah. How about for you? Be good. Be good. All right. How about this little guy over here? No. <laughs> Anything to say? No. Heck no. How about you, <laughs> Ms. Reverend Claire? <laughs> well, I think integrity is when we're our best selves. We're true to ourselves. Yeah. And she led a powerful meditation service this morning, so thank you for that. It's great to see you all here. I know you're going to have fun upstairs, but we're going to sing, too. So do you, are you guys ready to sing happy birthday? Does anybody on the stage here have a December birthday? Let's come on up. Let's, oh. My birthday's on Christmas. Oh. Really? So this isn't about Jesus. This is about Reverend Claire. Yes. Anybody else in the congregation today have a December birthday? Will you please stand? The, 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 the adults and the children have been working all morning on this for you. So here we go. So happy birthday to you and to you and to all y'all. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy Thank 
you for showing up today so that we can celebrate you. All right, you guys can all go down because we're going to sing. We're going to sing a song you might even know. It's called Deck the Hall. So if and as you're able, go ahead and stand up. We're going to sing another Christmas song and have some fun. Out also to all those people who dress for Christmas today. Deck the hall today. with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Draw the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 la. For us, fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus, fa la 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 la. Follow me in merry measure, fa la 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 la. While I tell of Yuletide treasure, fa la 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 la. Passes, fa la 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 la. Hail the new ye lads and lasses, fa la 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 la. Sing we joyous all together, fa la 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 la. Heaters of the wind and weather, fa la 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 la. All right, go ahead and spread some holiday cheer around the room. Walk around, shake a hand. Get a hug. Introduce yourself to somebody you don't know this morning. Oh, as we prepare now to settle into the meditative part of our service, I invite you to make sure your phone, phones are silenced. And let's begin by reading this morning's affirmation. God is all that I am. I express that God presence in all that I do. I 
I need to be still and let God love me. I need to be still and let God love me. When this old world starts to push and shove me, I need to be still and let God love me. I need to relax, let God take over. I need to relax, let God take over. Take this load off of my shoulders. I need to relax. Let God take over. I need to be still and let God love me. I need to be still and let God love me. This old world starts to push and shove me. I need to be still. Let God love me. I need to be still and let God. Today, we come together in joy. We gather in gratitude for the abundance that surrounds us and blesses our lives. We give thanks for community, for each other, the wonderful opportunities to serve and be served, to give and receive, to share, to join together in taking a stand for that which we believe in. We know today that God is all there is, in all and through all, expressing as each one of us, shining that divine light out into the world. We come together today ready to awaken, to receive, to open our eyes to the wonders, to the miracles, to the messages that are always waiting to guide us, show us the way. With love, 
we let this service unfold. Each person attending, each person sharing, each person giving of their own gifts in their own way, adding to the experience of being here together on this wonderful day. We know all is well. And we give thanks and we say together, and so it is. temptation but deliver
Thank you, Teresa. She said, we haven't heard that song in this room for a many, many a year, so it's a good time to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Melvin, too, for that. That was beautiful. Hmm. So I have a goal today. It's twofold. Do you want to hear it? I want to comfort the troubled, and I want to trouble the comfortable. (laughs) Does that just about cover everyone? (laughs) If your heart is heavy, if you're sad or depressed or upset or going through grief or some kind of a crisis, um, I trust that you will find some comfort here today. I, I, I frequently will ask all of you who are listening or, or who are here, whether or not you're listening, <laughs> um, to, I, I will ask you certain questions to make sure that you're still my peeps. Do you know what I mean? I will often say, do you want your life and your world to be better? Yes. Not that it's bad, but it can always be better, right? So, I, so you do, yeah? Okay, that's good. That's good. So again, if your heart is heavy, if you are troubled in any way, I trust that you will find... Uh, some comfort in the words that I share with you this morning, because if you listen, and if you hear, and if you apply what I'm going to talk about, your life will be better than you think it is right now. It can't help but be that way. If you are pretty comfortable this morning, good for you, um, and you might get ready to have your world rock and roll just a little bit, at least. And I I say that because of this. You've heard this. I haven't said it in a while. But different is not always better. But better is always different. So for those who are troubled and for those who are comfortable, different will happen because we want a better life. We want a better world. We belong to an organization that envisions a world that works for everyone. And if that's the case, then we are moving ourselves in that direction. And that means that things are going to change. That things have to be a little bit different. And I'm talking about those of us in the room who who feel pretty comfortable with our lives this morning, getting ready to have our world rock and roll a little bit, because comfort almost always equals complacency. Comfort is uh, somewhat overrated. One of the jokes, ongoing jokes in our uh, Path to Wealth class is, you know, they'll have us close our eyes. They say, close your eyes if you're comfortable. And then they'll say, well, even if you're not comfortable, close them. You know, because we want to move out of our comfort zone. We want to move out of the the confines of where we have established ourselves, even if it's all good, if it feels really good. If we want it to be better, those boundaries have to expand. So if you're comfortable and if you're troubled, today is for you. But enough about you. Let's talk about me for a minute. Um, Oh, but first I I want to talk about you. Maybe saw it go by. You maybe saw the theme go by for, and we talked about it with our youth, of of integrity. We're looking at the theme of integrity. It's one of our shared values. And in our guiding document, it says, this is how they describe integrity. We embrace the quality of being honest and strive to let our inner convictions match our outer actions. We express wholeness, honesty, and fairness in our relationships and activities. That is the shared value that we hold as people, as a part of Centers for Spiritual Living, that we honor and value the idea of integrity, that our inner convictions match our outer actions. And then I looked up integrity in the dictionary, and it's what you might expect, um, adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, honesty. We heard a lot of this from our kids today. This, the second definition is the one that I like and, and that is most appropriate for us, the state of being whole, entire, or undiminished. Being in integrity means the state of being whole, entire, or undiminished. The third definition is a sound, unimpaired, or perfect condition. So I hear hear wholeness and I hear unity in those. When I am feeling whole and entire and undiminished, when we feel that way, we are what we might say is on our path. My title this morning is Wandering Off Your Path. So when we are feeling like we're on our path, when we're on purpose, when we're on target, it's because our inner convictions and outer actions are in alignment. We are in wholeness with ourselves. And so back to me. As a young man out of college, I wandered a lot. I did a lot of that. I was unaware of any path for quite a while in my 20s. Um, And I remember 
uh, a few years after I moved away from the home I grew up in, I went on vacation with my family, with my parents and, and sisters again, and, and my dad and I were walking through the woods, and he kind of just finally broached a subject that I have a feeling was troubling him and was on his mind and heart, but he didn't know how to ask it, so he just finally said, so do you have any goals in life? <laughs> So that could not have been easy for a man with a young adult son to ask. It certainly wasn't pleasant to hear. But the reality was I really didn't have any goals at that time. What I thought I was going to be doing with my life, I wasn't doing, and it didn't look like I was going to. And then within months of that conversation, I went to my first what was called at that time Church of Religious Science in Huntington Beach, California. And I found my path. But if you know me at all, as I've walked this path over the last 30 years, I have encountered more than my fair share of squirrels, right? More than my fair share of those kinds of distractions that we hear about. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. <laughs> my master made me this collar. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this collar so that I may talk. Squirrel! It is no accident that his name is Doug. <sighs> and I sometimes still feel as if I'm drifting or wandering off the path that I have chosen. And I wonder if the same is true for you. Do you ever or often feel as if you are adrift or wandering, even if you're doing something you love? Um, when you look at your life, if you were to look at your life, let's go ahead and look at our life today. If I look at my life today, what, 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 what is my feeling about it? Do I feel as if I am on purpose? Do I feel as if I'm on point? Do I feel as if I'm just kind of wandering, just kind of bouncing like a, like a pinball, an old pinball or something off the bumpers of life? What I'm imagining as I look out, but as I was even writing these thoughts, is that I am imagining that not anybody who hears these words has ever, has actually fulfilled our true potential in our life. And this is not meant as a criticism. This is meant as an observation. Why would I be able to say that with pretty much 100% uh, accuracy? Because we're God! <laughs> Deborah Bear, I haven't seen you in a minute or so. It's so good to see you. <laughs> oh, what, oh, oh, so is everybody else, by the way. Squirrel, thanks. Yeah, so is everybody else. But we're God. God is all there is. And nobody that I know, nobody that I'm aware of, and nobody that I've even read about, even the greats, have ever lived to that full potential. So there's room for more, isn't there? There's room for better. There's room for us to recognize, first of all, that the divine is right where we are and that we can up-level our living. So if you are feeling like I am sometimes and sometimes more frequently, in fact, I shared with the Vision Corps this morning, as I came here this morning, I was feeling a bit distracted because <laughs> I'm going to talk about squirrels, I guess. But um, if you are at all feeling adrift or unfulfilled, uh, feeling like there's got to be more to life than what I am feeling and expressing, then take heed of the words of the founder of this faith and philosophy, a man named Ernest Holmes. He wrote in the Science of Mind textbook, he wrote, the universe is impersonal. This is a really tough thing for us sometimes if we grew up in a more uh, traditional faith to understand that, that the idea of God as principle and as law and as action uh, that is always working in a very real way is impersonal, and yet we want to have a personal relationship with God. But Ernest Holmes says, the universe is impersonal. It gives alike to all. It is no respecter of persons. It values each alike. Its nature is to impart, ours to receive. When we stand in the light, we cast a shadow across the pathway of our own experience. Ralph Waldo Emerson advises that we get our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. Get our bloated nothing. I mean, I say that phrase a lot because it is. What we think is in the way is nothing. It is ourselves. If we are seeing shadow, it's because our back is to the light. And as Ernest Holmes said, we are casting a shadow across our experience. So if I feel adrift, if I am wandering, I am the problem. I am in the way. I am in the way of the divine circuit. 
that aspect of God that is operating in my life. And it's highly likely, as I feel adrift, as I feel that I'm wandering, it's because my inner convictions and my outer actions are not aligned. That is wandering off the path. So what else does our faith and philosophy do? These universal spiritual principles have to say about this notion and about how we can um, align with the truth and what the truth really is. Uh, maybe it'll uh, give us a guiding light that we can uh, help us get back on the path if we've lost sight of whatever that path is for us. First, another reminder from, um, from Ernest Holmes. Um, oh, hang on a second. I think I skipped something. No. All right. This is also in the science of mind. Ernest Holmes says, freedom and he's going to give us a list of opposites and see if this describes any of your life recently. Freedom and bondage, sickness and health, Poverty and riches, heaven and hell, good and bad, big and little, happiness and misery, peace and confusion, faith and fear. And all conditions which appear to be opposites are not really a result of the operation of opposing powers, but are the way the one power is used. One power. I've said it already a few times this morning. God is all there is. There is not God and something else. God is all there is. So I am not um, feeling the effects of some opposing power to God in my life when I am feeling adrift, when I am feeling less than fulfilled. It is because of the way the one power is used. Well, how is it that we, you and I, use the one power that is? We use it with our thoughts. We use it with our beliefs, with what we expect and what we accept. That's how we use that one power. And so if in my life there is negativity... It is due in large measure to some way I am using this power that I am granted, that I am given as a creation of God, in some way that is resulting in unhappy circumstances for me. And I am the one that needs to, to find out what that is. I am the one standing in the way. If I am feeling that God is separate from me, for instance, say, up there, and we still have a lot of people in this faith, including practitioners and ministers who, talk, who say, thank God, right? <laughs> And I'm like, where'd you just look? But if I think that God is separate from me, like say up there, and God is far too busy to bestow any blessings upon me, if that's my belief and my expectation, then that is going to be my experience. The separation, the sense of separation is in me, not in God. But God can't be separate from me. God is all there is. But if I remember this following um, teaching, I'm going to be in the perfect position to have abundant blessings flow forth over me. And I'm going to put it on the screen because it's, it's um, written in Christian Sorensen's new book called Living from the Mountaintop. And it's a, it's a piece he attributes to Ernest Holmes. I don't know where it comes from. I had never seen it in this way before. He said, the secret place of the Most High is at the center of our own being, where in the silence we wait on the Spirit. There is no confusion in this secret place. None can enter it for us. None can prohibit its entrance to us. The door is always open, the gate ever ajar. The secret place of the Most High is a place of light, of illumination, of poise and assurance. The secret place of the Most High, the center of our own being is where it is. The kingdom of heaven is within us. That presence of spirit is right where we are, all of the time. Therefore, boys and girls, the good news is we can't wander off the path. We can't. The path is anywhere we are. We are always on the path. The path that you are supposed to be on is where? Right where you are. It's the one that you're supposed to be on right now. It's all God. And there, I, I often say in the beginning of the service, we honor all paths to God. Why do I say that? Because we understand that all paths lead to God. Eventually, a lot of people, myself included, take a lot of strange detours, but there's God there too. It's all God. Every aspect of the path that we are on and the path that we wander from is God. Even the wandering is God. That activity, that action. So if your heart or mind were troubled in any way when you arrived here this morning, I say in the spirit of the season, be of good cheer. Oh, and to quote my beloved Theo Ann Burns, be of good cheer. You haven't wandered off the path ever, ever. You've never wandered off the path. And for those of us who are comfortable when we arrive today, 
Um, you haven't either. But if you are comfortable or complacent, or if you have um, a commanding inner voice that says something like, there's no hope for me. I'm too old to change. I'm beyond help. Any of that, or if you're just complacent, stop it! A phrase came to mind this week, life can be better, so stop being bitter. Life can be better, so stop being bitter. But it can only be better if we are willing to change, if we're willing to make it so. This is such a simple point, but it feels to me to be of primary and ultimate importance for us to get, for me to get in the way that's right for me, for you to get in the way that's right for you. Because as I mentioned earlier, we are part of an organization that envisions a world that works for everyone, and that everyone includes us. And in fact, that everyone has to begin with us, with us discovering that world that works for us in our own lives. We must strike out in that direction first. We must. So stay the course. You're not off the path. Find a way to deepen in or learn and practice a spiritual practice. Use the tools that we have here. Meditation. Affirmative prayer, visioning. Or if you feel that you aren't uh, cognizant enough yet or comfortable enough yet with those practices, then schedule a session with a practitioner. Take a class to learn these practices. Call me. Do something that will remind you that you are on the right path. You are on the path of God. God is right where you are, no matter where you are. That's always the case. And so what I have boiled it down to really is a spiritual practice of remembering and returning. Remembering and returning. Remember that God is all there is. And wherever you are, that presence and that power is. That the path that you are walking is the path of God. Return then your awareness to the reality that that path that you are on is the right path for you right now. Yes, you may want to make changes. That's perfectly okay. But the right path for you is the one that you are on now. The great awakening happens when I realize this is not what I want. The path has led me here, and now I get to change. So I remember, and I return. And I remember, and I return as often as I need to. Remember that God is all there is. Remember that God is right where I am. Return my awareness to the truth that the path that I am on is the path that is full of God right now, and it's the right one for me. There's, another, there's a beautiful way of saying it that's um, written by a Sufi mystic that lived right around the, the turn between 900 and 1000 AD. And his name is Abu Sa'id Abul Khair. This poem is often attributed to Rumi. In fact, the, the internet is full of Rumi attributions for this, but I discovered the real truth. Not that it matters, they're long gone. But anyway, he wrote this, and I love this. <laughs> in, of course, I'm not going to speak in Farsi, I'm going to speak in English. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. It doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come yet again. Come, come. Even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, even if you have wandered off the path on a regular basis, every day, once or twice, even if you feel that you have, return. Remember, return and remember. Even if you've wandered a thousand times, come yet again. Do you know what happens to those squirrels when you come back, when you remember and you return? Even your squirrels become holy. Oh, that's, that's the poem. <laughs> you can't read it, and I couldn't make it more readable, but it says, the squirrel in me honors the squirrel in you. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Here's to holy squirrels. All right. So we're going <laughs> to... <we're gonna laughs> it's called the Namaste Squirrel. Just Google it. It's all over. Yeah. 
So we're going to move to sharing of our tithes and offerings. This is an opportunity for those of us who are present to give financially to this center whose light in Las Vegas and beyond is shining brightly, and we are so grateful to be sharing it with you. I love that we have this opportunity every week to become conscious of what and how we give, to know that it is the substance of God that we are giving, and to know that it does good work within this community and beyond, because what we received this morning, this week we will return 10% of it to our headquarters in Golden, Colorado, so that the, the denomination globally of Centers for Spiritual Living may continue to grow and flourish. And then we return a portion of what we receive today also locally to a charitable organization whose vision and mission we support. Um, and you'll hear more about that next week for our December uh, charity. So um, I invite you to take your gift in your hand. Some of us in the Path to Wealth class are, are tithing in that class this afternoon, so we have these slips that we can give to symbolize that. If you give outside of this moment to this center, use your connection card as I'm using this card to symbolize your giving. I invite you to give it a nice, free and joyful releasing blessing, and then we will send them on their way. And so it is. We're walking in the Floating in the moonlit sky The people far below are sleeping as we fly I'm holding very tight I'm riding in the midnight blue I'm finding I can fly It's a little teasing taste of a preview of our holiday candle lighting service, which you'll hear more about in a little bit. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Odyssey. All right, we have lots of wonderful things happening this season, this time of year, and next month that we're going to share with you, and then we will close with prayer. 
Uh, for the last m Sunday morning, anyway, uh, seniors, anyone who is eligible or is actually um, thinking of uh, looking at your Medicare enrollment, the enrollment period ends on the 7th, so this week it ends. But Carla Hine is with us one more time. Wave your hand out there. Carla is here. She's a, Medi she's a um, Medicare specialist. She has a table set up on the patio. You'll see a sign. You'll see her sitting there. She can answer questions for you. She can tell you about programs within and without of Medicare that you might not know about, that you may be eligible for, uh, things that exist, uh, resources, other resources in the community that might that you might qualify for as well. She is a fount of information. I saw her on Channel 8 answering phones this week as people were calling in to find out some of that. So go say hi. She's a member here and uh, find out what you might qualify for. This is a new month, the month of December, and a book on integrity is our book of the month this month, and it's called, If You Know Who You Are, You Will Know What To Do. I love that title. Have not read it yet, but I intend to this month. Ronald Greer is the uh, author, and it says he explores the two sides of integrity, personal integrity and moral integrity. So personal integrity involves an integrated life, the, the definition that I shared earlier, wholeness, where we are in harmony with ourselves, while moral integrity reflects the evolution of the word as uh, the idea of morality and ethics merged with the concept of wholeness. So integrity as a moral thing, as a societal thing. So if you feel like you might be at a turning point in your life, pick up this book. It's 20% off the cover price, and there is no sales tax in our bookstore as well. Our Wednesday service this week, the first Wednesday of December, Reverend Jeffrey K. Aloha Ryan will be with us. His um, title is A Whole Body Yes. In other words, launching into that path of integrity with your fullness. A Whole Body Yes, that's at 7 o'clock. That is preceded by our Buck Bowl Fellowship from 5.30 to 6.30. If you can provide soup or a side or another kind of entree for that, please let the kitchen staff know that. There's a sign-up sheet in the, in the great room. You can uh, help uh, with that. We are also looking to beef up our teams for Sundays and for Wednesdays in the kitchen. So if you feel like you want to volunteer in that way, go see uh, the kitchen and let them know that you are interested Next Sunday. Next Sunday is our holiday potluck. It is lots of fun. It's after the service. Um, there's a sign-up list so that we get an idea of what you're bringing. The church provides uh, the, the turkey, and then the rest of it is all provided by the rest of us who are going to attend. If you can sign up to be on the team to help uh, set it out and to clean it up afterwards, please uh, do that. There's a sign-up sheet as well. Uh, we're planning a raffle, gift baskets, and things like that. So if you have connections to a Starbucks or another coffee house or something like that, that you might be able to score some goodies for those gift baskets. See Larry, Larry, wa wave your hands. He's right back there. See Larry and let him know that you'll be getting that for us. Those baskets are going to be created this week and ready for raffle next Sunday. It's a lot of fun after the service. Please join us. Uh, but for today, did you bring something wonderful to eat or drink? If you brought something, would you raise your hand? Uh-oh. Oh, there's, okay, there's more. All right, I was like, CJ, there's going to be a run on whatever you brought. But thank you for those of you who else brought stuff. Uh, next week is just bring your potluck dish and uh, your appetite, so that's awesome. Lynn Frankenberger, come forth. We have a major event that you've heard about, if you've been here before, but if you're first time here, this will be the first time you hear about it. Welcome. It's great to be back. Anyway, Marianne Williamson is such an acclaimed author and speaker. We, we are honored to have her here for two nights in January on the 19th and 20th. She will be speaking to Healing the Soul of America on the 19th and Tears to Triumph on the 20th, two of her books that are bestsellers. And why I find this is so important, it is, it is the holiday season. And as Reverend Doug said, there may be some heaviness on hearts. There may be some sadness. And it is a time to come together as a community, as a community that represents One October, as a community that represents the world, a world that works for everyone here and around the world, and be in that place of spiritual healing. So I invite you to please join us. Kelly will be in the bookstore selling tickets. If there is that person in your life that you absolutely know you cannot figure out what to get them for the holidays. This is a perfect gift. It's a gift of giving, it's a gift of healing, it's a gift of an opportunity to hear one of the most famous speakers in the world. So I invite you to see us in the bookstore after the service and get your tickets. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Give Lynn a hand. And introduce yourself, young lady. Good morning, my family of choice. 
We have 21 amazing members who have volunteered to host a fun food and fellowship event called Gourmets for God. The bids have been tallied. The winners are ready. You have probably already received in the email, if we had an email for you, the events that you have won. The tickets are in the great room. Payment for the tickets is due today, next week, or the week after. If you're paying by check or cash, you just pay right in the great room and get your tickets instantly. If you're going to pay by credit card, you go to the great room first, you get your little slip that says what you've got, you take that to the bookstore, pay by credit card, bring back your rece receipt to show the people at the table, and you'll get your tickets. So the next part is you go have an amazing, awesome time enjoying the event. As one who has sponsored events every year, I will ask that if something comes up and you're not able to attend your event, find somebody to use your ticket. If you can't find someone to use your ticket, let your hostess or host know in enough time that they can find someone to fill the seat. So all the amazing food and things that they have planned are utilized fully. Before I return you to your original program, I want to publicly acknowledge and thank Ms. Judy Poteet for in her incredible organization, love, time, and energy that has gone into coordinating the Gourmet for God events. And if we have anyone out here who's well organized, who thinks they might like to be our coordinator for next year, talk with Reverend Doug. Thank you, Jill. Judy. Judy has removed her Gourmets for God hat and she's put on her other hat for this time of year. Now this is the time of year I wear many hats. But Santa sends his greetings and his blessings and says thank you all the way from the North Pole. He sees you. He loves you. <laughs> yes, it's time for Secret Santa. Most of you have a, a slip of paper that describes all the Secret Santa ins and outs and how to do it and all that other stuff. So I'm not going to tell you all about that. What I am going to tell you is about some of the kids that you will be sponsoring. Every kid has two ornaments. One is for toys, one is for clothes. So if you want to do the shopping, it'll cost you about $50 for clothes, $50 for toys and other gifts, books, stuff like that. If you want to just donate because you don't have $50, but you'd like to spend five, or you have $1,000 and you want to do, don't want to do all the shopping, it's okay because we'll take your money and we will spend it on these kids. Every dime, every dollar goes to the children. Today, I just happened to pick up a couple of ornaments. And this is Ada. She's an outgoing, playful six-year-old girl whose mother died recently. And her and her brothers moved in to dad, with dad. Now, you've got to realize, dad wasn't used to taking care of three kids because he only saw them occasionally on the weekends and paid child support. So the kids are struggling with grief. Dad's struggling to become a full-time dad. The kids are, you know, all of a sudden he's got the expense of everything, including Christmas that he hadn't really planned on having three kids at home for. So it's, it's a situation where the school has recognized that dad needs help. And what we do is we don't, we don't take away from the parents because what we do is we deliver the gifts in a big, huge bag with wrapping paper. Why? Because we want the parents to become involved. We want them to participate. We want them to be able to give these gifts to their children. See, we're actually Santa Claus ourselves, aren't we, when we do that? And we're giving to the whole family in that way. And this is Calvin. Calvin is kind of pretty typical of most of the kids because he loves coming to school. But his clothes are too small or very worn. He looks kind of bedraggled. 
And that's mainly because the parents don't have the resources to buy new clothes. Either the child is wearing hand-me-downs or they've shopped at a second-hand store. And this is Demarion. He's a sad, kind of quiet little boy. He's nine years old. And he's been living with Grandma in Minnesota because Mom, when he was born, wasn't able to take care of him. And so she's living in Las Vegas now and trying to create her own life. She's made some major changes. But unfortunately, Grandma died a few months ago. Damien's moved in with Mom. Now, he loves being with Mom, but he's lost his Grandma, and he's lost his home. He needs a miracle at Christmas. So thank you for being a part of the miracles for these kids. Thank you for being a part that creates hope, that instills in them the idea that anything is possible, including something special at Christmas. Thank you. This says I'll be in the foyer. I'm not in the foyer. I'm out in the courtyard. Okay? So thank you. She's not easy to miss. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Thank you, Judy. That is a burning vision for her, and she has carried that torch for 25 plus years. It's awesome. Um, and I mentioned earlier our, our Christmas or holiday candle lighting service. That is going to be one night only this year, Saturday, December 23rd, not Christmas Eve, the day before that. So Saturday, December 23rd at 7 p.m. right here in this room. It's a, it's a musical um, evening, and the music is wonderful and really, really, really good. And so I invite you to put that on your calendar and enjoy that holiday celebration with us. All right. We're going to pray now as the ministry of prayer begins to surround you in a chamber-like setting. We call this the chamber of prayer. Um, I want you to know that prayer is available after the service. That's if you would like one-on-one -on -one prayer, we call it a moment of prayer. It's not a full practitioner session. It's a time for you to sit and receive immediate prayer for whatever is on your mind or heart, whether that's something challenging or something good that you would like to have continue. I invite you to go there first. It's open for about 15 minutes after the end of our service. And then head over to the bookstore for uh, Mary Ann Williamson tickets and the wonderful atmosphere and other opportunities to shop in the bookstore and fellowship in the great room after that. So... As we surround you this morning, I want you to know that this ministry of prayer is active every single day. Our, our agreement to be a part of this spiritual support team at this center is to enter into prayer every day for you. In general, knowing that God is active and right action is the truth of your life, or specifically, if you have a specific request that you'd like us to address, write it on your connection card, email the ministry of prayer, the address is on your flyer this morning. Just know that we believe what we teach here and that we know that God is active in your life. So knowing that, let's take in a deep breath. And I close my eyes and I remember in this moment the truth that God is all there is. I'm so grateful to have this moment to remember that, to have this morning to say it and to feel it over and over again, that that which created the universe is still everything that is. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning of what? In the beginning of time and space. That first moment of creation, that big bang where the universe came into being, God already is. And so there was nothing for the universe to be made of but the substance of that which is everything. The Creator transcends time and space and yet fills it all, making this universe in its own image and likeness. The universe continuing now to expand and expand and expand and expand into the infinite becoming more and more like its creator. And because I know there is only one, I know there must be wholeness, there must be right action, there must be peace and order, unity, nothing else. And because this is the truth of all being, I know it is the truth of my being. I stand right here, right now, unified with that which created me knowing that its wholeness, its unity, its perfection, its right action is the truth of my life, always. And as I know that to be true for me, I know it to be true for everyone present here in this space now, 
for anyone who ever hears these words because this is the truth everywhere always. And I'm so grateful in this moment to have this opportunity this day to bring myself back into alignment with that. To have that inner conviction so strong and so vibrant and so bright before me that every action this day is in alignment with them. Integrity, wholeness, unity, perfection. This is the truth of my life and our life right now. And as we move forth from this celebration service, I know that we move in and as the presence of that one that is perfection and wholeness. We move in and as that which created us. And we are then free to shine this light, this awareness, and this practice in brighter and greater ways in our lives, truly moving closer and closer and closer to a world that works for us, a world that works for everyone. I am so grateful for this. I'm so grateful for this gathering this morning, for the truth as we know it and the truth as it is expanding in our lives. I'm grateful for this Center for Spiritual Living, for all centers, all churches and synagogues and temples and places where people gather because truly every path ultimately and eventually leads to God because it's all God. And so I'm grateful to know this and I release my word into that law, the law that knows, the law that creates, the law that is absolute. It creates according to our belief, our acceptance, and our expectancy. And so we believe and accept and expect only good and more good right here and right now. It is done, and so it is. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. All right, if and as you're able, go ahead and get on your feet. We finish our releasing by singing, I really do. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And when my heart is open wide, yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the Spirit. Yes, I'm reach out on either side of you, take a hand on the person next to you or across the aisle if possible. Please say after me, something wonderful is happening as me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in everything I do. I am it. I receive it. I share it. And I accept it just the way that it is, and just the way that it becomes. Thank you, life. Amen.